Hello and welcome to my advanced tanking guide for the Vengeance Demon Hunter in World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. This video is a follow up to my beginner's guide to tanking on the Vengeance Demon Hunter. So if you're just getting started with tanking, I recommend that you watch that video first. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If you're pretty comfortable with tanking on a Demon Hunter and you're looking for some advanced techniques to take your tanking to the next level, then this is probably the video for you. Most of what I say and cover in this video is designed to help you out in dungeons, but some of the concepts and principles can be taken into raids. My general advice for raids is that you learn the fights, the encounters, and the pulls because different skills, abilities, and techniques are going to apply to different things. In raids, you're going to be playing that content hopefully with an organized group and you'll be playing on a regular enough basis that you'll be uh, practicing those fights over and over again and that's really going to be the best way to learn how to tank in a raid. In a dungeon you kind of jump in with whoever whatever and you get to apply some more general techniques and that's what we're going to cover in this video. So we're going to start out by taking the talent build that we put together during our last video. Remember this was a talent build that was designed to give you something you could work with that would help you through your talents but not really influence the way you were playing too much so that you could practice the core rotation of the specialization and just kind of get the very basics down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to evolve this talent build into something that is actually more active, will add a little bit more complexity, and is all around a better build for tanking. So we're going to switch over to this build here, and we've made a few changes. So we're going to go through the talent build real quick, then we're going to show how this might affect our rotation as we're tanking uh, with this particular build. Now we've kept a lot of things the same. If you notice, our first three talents here are the same from build to build. So we still have Abyssal Strike. This is the ability that increases the range of Infernal Strike and reduces its cooldown by 8 seconds. This is a great talent, so we're keeping it. Along with that, we're keeping Flame Crash, which is going to cast a Sigil of Flame after we land with Infernal Strike. So we're keeping that combination together. We're still going to be doing our weaving of Sigil of Flame and Infernal Strike to keep the Sigil of Flame debuff up on our enemies as much as possible. We're also keeping Fallout, uh, which gives Immolation Aura's initial burst a chance to shatter lesser soul fragments from enemies. This is going to help us to generate some initial soul fragments to get things going uh, during our initial pull. Now, everything beyond that we have changed. So we have gone from Feed the Demon on the 104 talent tier to now using Fracture. Fracture is going to replace Shear. If you remember, Shear is our ability that will deal damage to the target and cause a soul fragment to be shattered from them. It also generates 10 pain for us. So this is how we build up our pain resource and it's how we are able to reliably create soul fragments for use with our other abilities. Now we're going to be using Fracture instead. Fracture has a 4.2 second recharge so you can't spam it like crazy but it does have two charges so you can spam it kind of back to back a little bit and the recharge time is low enough that it doesn't really ever feel like you're not able to hit it when you need to. What Fracture does is instead of generating 10 pain like Shear does, we get 25. So we get more than double the amount of pain. This is going to help us build up our resource very quickly. Also, uh, when we do damage to the enemy, it's going to cause two lesser soul fragments to shatter from the targets instead of one. So this is going to help us ramp up our pain resource for spending on abilities faster and help us generate souls faster to use on abilities as well. So all in all this is just going to make us play a lot faster. Next we went from having uh, concentrated sigils on our 106 tier to Sigil of Chains. Now if you don't like Sigil of Chains you can keep concentrated sigils and that's going to be perfectly fine. What Sigils of Chains does is it gives us a new sigil we can use which will allow us to place down our little area of effect here and what this will do is all enemies that are affected by the sigil we get, 
pulled to the center of the sigil and snared after two seconds. This will reduce their movement speed by 70% for six seconds. And really what this does is it just helps you group enemies up together so that it's easier for you to hit them with your AOE. It's easier to keep them close to you. And it's easier for your party members to use AOE abilities against them as well. So it's a nice crowd control ability that helps you to make sure that you're getting your other debuffs onto the enemies. Now, after that, we are changing from Gluttony, which gave us a chance to uh, activate Metamorphosis for five seconds when we consume a Soul Fragment. We're going to be using Spirit Bomb instead. Spirit Bomb is like the bread and butter of Vengeance tanking. This gives us a new ability that utilizes our uh, Soul Fragments. If you recall, in our initial build, the only thing we had to spend Soul Fragments on was soul cleave soul cleave costs some pain and it would consume up to two soul fragments to heal us uh, for what the soul fragments would heal for plus it did a little bit of healing on its own and because of that we were mainly wanting to use soul cleave when we needed healing and not spend it any other time Spirit Bomb, however, gives us a new ability this costs 30 pain it's an instant cast ability you will consume up to five soul fragments. So now we can use even more soul fragments than we could with soul cleave within 25 yards and then explode, afflicting nearby enemies with frailty for 20 seconds and damaging them for a thousand damage per uh, fragment. So if we use this ability with our five soul fragments up, we do 5,000 or so damage. This is gonna change based on the stats on your gear and your level, obviously. Um, and then we also afflict all the enemies around us with frailty. We heal for 10% of all damage that we deal to enemies with frailty. Now, what this means is instead of Soul Cleave healing us for about 5,000, we're going to use Spirit Bomb to deal some damage. Then all the enemies around us are going to be afflicted with frailty, and 10% of all the damage we do to those targets is going to come back to us as healing for the 20 seconds that they have frailty up. So this means that our... Sigil of Flame, our Immolation Aura, our Sigil of Flame from Infernal Strike. All those AoE abilities are going to be hitting all those enemies and we'll be getting all that healing. Plus, whatever target we're focused on, we're going to be hitting them with our Fracture, dealing that damage and healing as well. So this gives us more ways to use our, our Lesser Soul Fragments, more ways to use our Pain, more ways to heal ourselves, more ways to debuff the enemy. So it's a great ability that we're going to use all the time when we're tanking. Finally, this very last tier, it's actually okay to pick any of these talents. It's up to personal preference. So I'm going to go over them all real quick and you can make the determination yourself. Originally, we were using Last Resort. This is an ability that would keep you from dying if you were to take fatal damage. So sustaining fatal damage instead transforms you to metamorphosis form and returns you to 30% health. This effect can only occur every eight minutes. This is a great talent to have when you're first learning, if you're worried about dying because you're still trying to figure things out. It's also a good talent to have in how difficult content because even if you know what you're doing, you may get overwhelmed or maybe something happens with one of your party members and you do end up dying through you know, no fault of your own or just not quite being able to match the difficulty you're playing at. So it's still fine to have this talent if you want it. Next, we have Void Reaver. Enemies struck by Soul Cleave deal 6% less damage to you for 15 seconds. Now, we won't be doing using Soul Cleave as much as we did in the previous build, so this isn't as useful, but it does give you another reason to use Soul Cleave because you can use it on command when you hit a bunch of enemies to get that 6% less damage taken from them for 12 seconds. So instead of looking at Soul Cleave as an ability that is mainly there just to heal you, you can now look at it as a way to prevent some extra damage so this gives you another mitigation tool in addition to your demon spike so it is nice to have that ability there as well if you're playing in a situation where you're going to be able to hit a lot of enemies with soul cleave this is really great to use 
Finally, the talent that we're going to be taking in this video is Soul Barrier. This is an instant cast ability with a 30 second cooldown, so we can use it fairly often. This will shield us for 12 seconds, and it's going to absorb about 23,000 damage, which based on my current health is about a fifth or a little bit less than a fifth of my uh, overall health pool. So this can protect a fifth-ish of my health bar on command. This will consume all soul fragments within 25 yards and for each soul fragment it consumes it will add about 4500 additional uh, absorb damage to that shield. So if we're able to absorb five soul fragments then we're able to get this up to you know like 40 50,000 uh, damage on the absorb instead of the 23 and that is about a third a little over a third of the health pool that I currently have so this gives you a big oh crap button which you really don't have on the vengeance demon hunter aside from kind of using metamorphosis so I like to include this just as a oh something's gone wrong I can hit this and I know that you know I can withstand an extra chunk of damage while I'm playing so this is the build that we're going to be using. So how does this change up our rotation now? Well, we're going to be following the same kind of stuff we were earlier. First off, Sigil of Chains is an additional tool that we can use. You can use this whenever you think it's convenient. I can't really show it off against the target dummies because they don't move, but just know that this is more of a utility ability for you and not necessarily something you need to build into your actual rotation because it doesn't affect your damage output or anything like that. It just affects the positioning of the enemies. So if you find that you're never using this and you just don't like it or you feel like the situations come up where this isn't good to you, then you could just switch back over to concentrated sigils get that extended duration of your on your sigil flame and you know not have to worry about targeting your sigils perfectly valid option so this doesn't really get built into your rotation soul barrier is there as an oh crap button so that doesn't really affect our rotation it just gives us another button to hit the main way our rotation is going to change is through fracture and spirit bomb so let's take a look at that we'll do a really quick recap when we open combat we're going to jump in with our infernal strike that's going to put our sigil flame down on the ground we're going to hit immolation aura that's going to give us a couple soul fragments. It's going to get some AoE damage going. And between that and Sigil Flames, we've picked up Threat uh, on our opponents. Then we're probably going to want to get our Demon Spikes up right away. Now we're going to Fracture and build up our Spirit, our Soul Fragments. Now, there's a couple of things to note here. Before, when we were originally doing our... Uh, beginner's guide build it was we weren't really paying attention to when we were creating more soul fragments than we needed because we didn't really have anything to spend soul fragments on besides soul cleave so if we were at five soul fragments and we got the sixth one it wasn't a big deal that you know oldest soul fragment we had created would just siphon into us heal us for a little bit and we'd have five and we weren't too worried about it well, now we actually really don't want to create extra soul fragments because we do have something that we can always spend soul fragments on. So now when we generate extra soul fragments, we're not using them to their maximum capacity because we have several abilities now that will use those soul fragments for good effect. So if we are in the first scenario where we're just you know let's say we're playing our beginners build but this time we just have fracture then you know we would generate there's two of our soul fragments we generate two more so we're at four if we were to cast this again we create six and one of those gets sucked into us right and in our beginner build that wasn't a big deal that was perfectly fine however in this build, we have several different abilities to use. So before we were just using Soul Cleave, which heals us, right? It heals us, it brings in uh, Soul Fragments that also heal us. So if we didn't need healing, we didn't need the Soul Fragments. However, our big ability here is Spirit Bomb. So Spirit Bomb will uh, deal that damage and inflict frailty to enemies around us, but it does more damage the more spirit shard or the more soul fragments i'm gonna keep saying spirit shards i apologize the more soul fragments we have the more damage it does so if we were at four spirit or 
four soul fragments and uh, we wanted we were going to cast fracture again to generate another one then what would happen is we would generate six soul fragments one would get sucked in we didn't get to spend it on spirit bomb or any of our other abilities now that might need not seem like such a big deal when you're initially looking at it in that one scenario but if you look at that over the course of a dungeon and you're doing that over and over and over and over again then you're looking at tens or hundreds of soul fragments that you have essentially wasted as a resource you do get the healing from them but for you know every time every four times that you generate that extra or four or five times you generate that extra soul fragment you could have cast another powerful spirit bomb. So what we want to do is build up to four soul fragments. If we happen to have five, then that's fine. We can cast at five as well. But ideally what we want to do is after we do our opener and we start generating our soul fragments, we're going to cast Fracture. That's going to generate two. We're going to cast Fracture again. That's going to generate four. Now, if we were to cast Fracture again, we would go up to six. We don't want that. So when we have four, we cast Spirit Bomb. That sucks in all the soul fragments around us, which should be four or five, because sometimes you do just have an extra soul fragment lying around, or sometimes you do hit Fracture on accident and create the extra one. But now we're able to do that spirit bomb with four soul fragments worth of damage and we put frailty onto our targets. So the other thing that we can use our soul fragments on is our big oh crap button soul barrier. So this is another reason we don't want to waste soul fragments because if we have those soul fragments out then we're able to use them on soul barrier and get that additional damage absorbed shield for each soul fragment that we consume so let's say that we were in a situation where we were you know kind of in trouble getting low on health and we wanted to push that oh crap button you'll see that once we cast soul barrier we now have 42,000 damage that we're able to absorb because we absorbed those extra soul fragments so the main thing that I really want to emphasize here is that now with this build, you want to monitor your soul fragments. You want to make sure you're not creating extra soul fragments that aren't getting used towards sheer spirit bomb or soul barrier, mainly spirit bomb. So now our rotation is going to look like this. We're going to jump in. We're going to start combat then we're going to basically just cast spirit bomb every time we have four soul fragments the exception to this is if we need healing then we can use soul cleave or if we are going to cap on our pain for some reason we're going to have more pain we're going to generate extra pain that's not going to get used we can still use soul cleave to dump some of that off or if we need a little bit of healing we can still cast soul cleave and if we need to hit an oh crap button, then we can hit soul barrier. That's really all the changes that we're making, but this makes a huge difference in the way that the build is going to play. So let's go through and we're going to take it slowly through this rotation and kind of see how this is going to work and then we'll speed it up. So we jump in with our infernal strike, we get our sigil of flame, we cast our immolation aura, go ahead and hit our demon spikes. We're going to start generating some of these soul fragments. You see here we have three, four, we went up to five. We want to cast Spirit Bomb, suck all those in. We're going to start casting our Fracture again. And remember, we're still trying to do our Immolation Aura whenever we get a chance. Spirit Bomb at five. Okay, get our Infernal Strike going, get our Sigil of Flame going. Everything you were doing in the first video, you're still doing in this iteration. But now you're just really paying attention to how many soul fragments you have. And when you hit four or five, you cast Spirit Bomb. So it adds in a little bit of complexity because uh, we didn't have to worry about that too much in the first build. You know, we were really focused on getting our cycle going of Infernal Strike, Sigil Flame, Infernal Strike, Infernal Strike, Sigil Flame, and making sure we were using all of our abilities and keeping our demon spikes up. Well, now we've added to that where it's like, okay, I need to pay attention to the number of soul fragments I have and hit Spirit Bomb every time I can. So let's speed that up a little bit. And I'm going to try to talk through this, but uh, that tends to slow me down a little bit. So I'm going to focus mostly on trying to make sure that I uh, play through the rotation 
as best as I can. So go there, we're going to get our Immolation Aura going, put our Demon Spikes up, start generating some Soul Fragments. We're at 5, so we Spirit Bomb. We'll go ahead and Infernal Strike in place to get Sigil Flame going again. It's about time for Demon Strikes. We're going to Immolation Aura, go back into our Fracture to generate some more Soul Fragments. Spirit Bomb again. Infernal Strike in place to get that debuff back up. We're going to Fracture again, build up those Soul Fragments, Spirit Bomb at 1, get our Demon Spikes going, we've got Immolation Aura. You see how like now with this particular build, with having to focus on the amount of Soul Fragments you have and using Spirit Bomb, the build is much more frantic now. It's much more like, oh, I always have a button to push all the time, so I gotta make sure, okay, do I have this, do I have that? Before, it was a lot smoother, and we could really just focus on keeping that, you know, Sigil Flame debuff debuff up and just using uh, soul cleave whenever we needed to heal ourselves now we've got layers layers and layers of stuff to pay attention to and this makes the build that much more uh, fast paced and intense so the next thing we're going to talk about is setting the pace now if you're running dungeons especially with random people then there are going to be times where you are able to play faster or slower and as the tank it's your job to lead the group in the dungeon and set the pace of the dungeon so let's say that you're in a situation where your dps is killing it they are mowing down all the enemies and your healer is just doing a fantastic job of keeping you healed up well that's a situation where you would want to set a more aggressive fast pace because you have a group that's capable of maintaining that so what does that entail well really for the demon hunter you've got a couple of different things you could do one you have a lot of mobility and you have a lot of aoe so let's say that we jumped into our pool and we're fighting these guys and we're down to one maybe two enemies left one of the things you can do is go over to the next group and just start just just drag those guys with you into the next group and start getting your threat built up on that group in particular. Or you could alternatively just stay where you're at, put your target onto a enemy farther away and use your throw glaive to put aggro onto that target and several targets nearby. Just making sure that when they get to you that you've got some AOE or something else going to start getting that threat on them right away so you can be aggressive in this manner you can also infernal strike to the next group and that will put a sigil flame down so say we were almost done with these guys then we just infernal strike over here and start taking them on uh, so that's one way you can pick up the pace a little bit now when you are picking up the pace you have to make sure that if for some reason everybody wasn't on board with what you were doing then you are able to kind of go okay i can i can handle myself uh until everybody kind of catches up to where i'm at because you may have a situation where you're setting that fast pace and for whatever reason maybe your healer had to get up and go to the bathroom or maybe one of your dps you know went afk or fell asleep at the keyboard or something you've got to be prepared to compensate for the fact that you're being aggressive by keeping yourself alive essentially so you have got a couple of tools to do that so what i recommend is that if you are playing aggressively and if you're just doing like one pull and towards the end you're going into the next pool that's not quite as big of a deal as if you are in the middle of a group of four enemies two are down you're pulling the next one two are down you're pulling the next one just kind of chain pulling over and over again or you're grabbing a couple groups of enemies to fight all at the same time you need to be prepared to defend yourself and keep yourself alive so you're going to be doing that two ways one is by maintaining threat so that everyone else in your party can do their job right if you're healer is trying not to die because everything is attacking them then they can't heal you which means you're probably gonna die if your dps is getting attacked then they can't focus on killing the enemies fast enough so that they do the minimum amount of damage possible so that everybody can survive so holding threat is very important so you want to have ways to accelerate your threat and then secondly the other way is by using your defensive abilities to keep yourself alive so what i mean by this is 
if I were going to pull, let's say the normal pull is four enemies. Well, I can go through my standard rotation, do everything I need to do uh, for that particular group of enemies. And then if that's the pace that my group is going at, then that's great. If I'm accelerating the pace, then I may want to switch my focus over to maintaining threat through use of my AoE abilities. So in the little rotation example we showed earlier, I mentioned that things get much more intense, much more fast paced. You have all these buttons that you're trying to keep up with and push and, okay, I've got to have my Infernal Strike and my Immolation Aura, my Sigil Flame. i got to hit Spirit Bomb on time. you got to do all these things. Well, when you're setting the pace faster, you have to prioritize what is most important from those things. And what is most important are the two things that I just mentioned. So to maintain threat on multiple enemies, prioritize your AoE abilities. So if I'm in here, you know, fighting, let's say there's like six people here, I'm going to make sure that I hit Sigil Flame and Immolation Aura every chance I get. So Immolation Aura, every time that thing is off cooldown, I'm hitting it. Every time uh, my targets don't have the Sigil Flame buff debuff on them, then I'm either hitting Sigil Flame to get ready to cast that, or I'm getting ready to Infernal Strike Jump to cast Sigil Flame. Because doing that AoE damage to all those targets is going to make sure that I am doing my job as the tank so everyone else can do their job. Now the second part is keeping yourself alive. So you have a panic button right now with Soul Barrier. So if you get into a position where you're like, oh crap, I pulled a little too much, my party needs to catch up to me, then hit your Soul Barrier. Hit it early, Get the extra damage mitigation, get that 30 second cooldown going so that you can then push that soul barrier again further on into the fight if you need to. Because it may come back around where you're like, I need a second oh crap button. And you don't really have one except for maybe metamorphosis, which is another option you could throw in there. Um, but if you've already got that barrier uh, cooldown ticking early, then you'll be able to use it again later keeping your demon spikes up is going to be very important and you may switch over to just casting soul cleave for two reasons soul cleave strikes all enemies in front of you which is going to help you maintain threat on them and it also heals you so that's going to help your healer deal with the fact that you're playing at an aggressive pace now if your healer if you're doing all this and your healer is still just rocking it and keeping you topped off then don't worry about soul cleave right start working on that spirit bomb get that extra damage push that stuff out there you know what you need everything you need to do so uh, that's going to help you set a faster pace now with a normal pace i already kind of covered that just do your standard rotation pull one group at a time do what you need to do nuke them down go to the next group that's f it's fine to set a pace like that if your party is able to do that consistently with very little downtime between the different groups now if you are struggling, if your group is struggling, then it's up to you as the tank to try to make sure that the pace gets slowed down enough that everybody can focus. A lot of times it comes down to getting overwhelmed with you know, having to go from one thing to the other over and over again. So as a tank, you want to be able to slow things down. You want to make sure that your healer has a ample opportunity to heal your other party members and yourself. So kind of like you do when you play aggressively, you switch more into a sort of defensive holding threat kind of uh, position when you are slowing the pace down as well. The difference is you're being much more careful in your pools and you're doing everything you can to mitigate as much damage as possible. So that may mean that you're now focusing on using your utility abilities like your Sigil of Silence or Misery to make sure that you know these enemies that are casting spells and abilities don't get to cast them as often, which is going to help your healer uh, have more time to get everybody's health pools all the way back up. Or you may be using your interrupt ability to interrupt those spells. Um, you know, taunting particular enemies to pull them back over to you. Uh, you're really going to want to focus on these type of things. Util use, <laughs> utilize your utility. <laughs> use your utility skills to help mitigate damage to everyone. So a lot of times as tanks, we get in there and our job, we keep ourselves alive. We keep the threat together. We do as much personal mitigation as possible. But a good tank who's setting the pace 
correctly will be able to get in there and utilize all their utility abilities to minimize damage coming out from other uh, enemies as well. Now we don't have like a pure stun on a demon hunter but different classes will use stuns, you'll use interrupts, you'll use slows, silences, pulls, all these kind of things to make sure that you are controlling the battlefield. That's what you really do as a tank. You set the pace and you control the battlefield and once you've got a lot of experience you'll be able to do all this stuff without having to worry about what the pace is you'll get into a fast paced thing and you'll already know this is what i need to do and you'll start to incorporate the other stuff as well the uh cc abilities and all your utility abilities so uh, that's how you kind of set the pace on a tank and more specifically how you set the pace with your different abilities on the demon hunter the next thing we're going to talk about is how to play offensively versus defensively and this ties pretty heavily into what we just talked about but there's a slight difference before we were talking about setting the pace of the group overall now we're talking about how to change your rotation and your priorities so that depending on the situation you can focus on either outputting the maximum amount of damage possible outputting the most defensive ability that you can or finding a nice blend in between. Now on a Vengeance Demon Hunter, if you're trying to maximize your offensive output, you're definitely going to follow your AoE rotation as much as possible. But if you want to output as much damage as you possibly can, aside from using your uh, your AOE abilities, then you're going to want to basically you're going to want to focus primarily on spamming fracture into spirit bomb as much as possible. Those are kind of your bread and butter damage dealing abilities. So you should prioritize that over just about everything else. Like don't worry about casting your demon spikes. Don't worry about casting soul cleave. Don't worry about your utility abilities. You're going to focus on I need to fracture, fracture, and then spirit bomb fracture fracture spirit bomb make sure i keep my immolation aura up every time i get it make sure i've got sigil flame on my opponents as much as possible the other thing you could do is you can hit fiery brand on a particular enemy preferably one with a higher uh, health pool in order to help burn them down really quickly as well especially if you're doing a fight with phases where you know you're going to have this off cooldown in between every fight then you're going to be doing that so that's how you play a little bit aggressively on the uh, demon hunter and try to eke out uh, some more damage you know no matter what you do if you're trying to get more damage you're sacrificing defense so and utility usually which means don't worry about the demon spikes don't worry about the soul barrier don't worry about the metamorphosis you just want to spam fracture fracture spirit bomb fracture fracture spirit bomb immolation or a sigil flame fracture fracture spirit bomb if you need to play defensively then you do the exact opposite you let those powerful damage dealing tools fall away so that you can uh, emphasize your defensive tools so let's say that you're in a position where you just need to survive no matter what well if that's the case be proactive use that soul barrier ahead of time to get that damage mitigation use metamorphosis but make sure that when you use it you're able to get the healing from it uh, also make sure you keep your demon spikes up as much as possible focus on using your cc abilities to mitigate damage in ways that you normally can't by interrupting spells or uh, removing a beneficial magic effect that may be powering up a particular enemy so that's how you can kind of switch from being uh aggressive or doing offense versus defense on a demon hunter usually you're doing a good blend of the two but it really comes down to the situation your particular party that you're playing with and what has recently happened that may have changed the dynamic of your party you know like i said whether that's your healer had to leave or someone fell asleep at the keyboard that may change the dynamic in the previous video you saw that at the very end of the dungeon i had a situation where two of my dps party members just died so I needed to focus on tanking what I could, but because we lost, you know, uh, like two-thirds of our DPS, I needed to also switch over to playing more aggressively to try to help do the damage that we needed to do in order to complete the boss fight. So that's what I did, is I said, okay, on these targets, I'm going to just 
burn every cooldown I have. I'm going to use Fiery Brand on this target. I'm going to make sure that I, I don't even care about my soul fragments aside from just trying to dump as much damage into these people as possible. With that build, I just spammed Soul Cleave for the damage and didn't even care about the healing because I was focused on trying to output as much damage as possible to help us finish that fight. In a different situation where maybe the healer died, then I would want to go full defensive and I would want to be using Metamorphosis, Soul Barrier practically on cooldown, Soul Cleave to heal myself, Spirit Bomb to get that extra healing, Demon Spikes every chance I could, using my uh, utility CC mitigation tools in order to help myself survive as long as possible. Okay, now that we've taken a look at our new talent build and we've gone over some of these concepts, we're going to queue up into a dungeon and see it all play out in practice. Okay, so we're queuing into the Temple of Sithralis, and I just wanted to remind you once again that I'm going to do everything I can to explain what's going on to you. I don't click when I typically play. I'm clicking so that I can show you, help you uh, to follow along here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of feel out the pace of our group. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into combat. We got our Sigil Flame, go into Immolation Aura. We start casting our Fracture. When we hit our four Soul Fragments, we Spirit Bomb. Don't forget to cast your Demon Spikes in there. It looked like for the most part I was keeping it together there, uh, not taking too much damage. Also, don't worry if initially here uh, I lose threat on targets or I cap on my pain or I cap on my soul fragments because I'm going to try to walk you through what I'm doing and generally what that's going to mean is because I'm trying to uh, describe what's going on uh, I'm not going to be, pay be paying as much attention to these things as I can. Now here we've got a situation where a party member of mine decided to pull without me uh, obviously confident in their ability to stay alive against this target and that may be the case this is kind of a good indicator sometimes it could be an indicator that you have someone who's impatient or it could be an indicator that you have someone who is geared enough that they're not worried about the enemies in this dungeon too much so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna leap in again we're gonna cast our immolation aura this is kind of a cool place where we might want to cast our sigil of chains to yank these guys back in we're going to soul fragment up until we've got the appropriate number of, uh, sorry, we're going to fracture until we have the appropriate number of soul fragments, and then we're going to cast Spirit Bomb. Alright, so I'm going to assume that you are familiar with what we did in the first video as far as our rotation goes, and I want to focus on how to use all the new aspects of our talent build here. So fracture... Fracture, we're at three soul fragments, so we're going to go ahead and spirit bomb there. We could have saved for another fracture. We're at two, fracture again, spirit bomb. And so now these ha these people have frailty on them, which is going to allow us to heal for the damage that we deal against them. All right, so against the boss, I'm going to go in, get my emulation aura going. I'm going to fracture. I'm up to four of my soul fragments so I spirit bomb get my demon spikes going I'm up to four soul fragments again now you can tell that when I am casting uh, my fracture it takes a couple of seconds for it to click in and show that there are four soul fragments so that's something you have to watch out for you have to give enough time for your soul fragments to actually spawn before you cast your other abilities. If you just hit Fracture, Fracture, Soul, uh, Spirit Bomb, then what's going to happen is you're not going to get the full benefit of those fragments because they haven't actually spawned yet. Now, as you can see here, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, my healer is keeping me super topped off. My damage dealers are also... Uh, staying pretty healthy and doing a pretty good job getting these opponents down. So what this means to me is that I've got a decent group and we can set a faster pace in this particular dungeon. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. This part is always super annoying. So let's... Whoop, and... We're going to go ahead and pick this guy up. And we're going to pull him further out of this mess. 
I'm going to go ahead and use my throw glaive on him as well, because that should generate some extra threat. And he is definitely getting away from me, so I'm going to go taunt him. I'm going to keep throwing my glaive at him, because uh, throw glaive is an ability that it does put a significant amount of threat onto the opponent. <clears throat> Now, in the situation where I capped on Pain here, it's actually better for me to cast Soul Cleave if I don't have a lot of Soul Fragments up. And the reason for that... Let's go ahead and get this guy over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull these guys kind of over to Sigil of Chains. That's going to yank him in, get, us cl get him closer to us. But uh, what I was saying is if I'm capped on Pain and I don't have the Soul Fragments, by default, our Spirit Bomb only does, you know... 1,000 or 1,100 damage. So we need the Soul Fragments for Spirit Bomb to deal a significant amount of damage. Without those Fragments, Soul Cleave actually does significantly more damage. So if we're just trying to dump some Rage from our abilities, then we're going to want to use Soul Cleave. But if we have the Spirit Fragments available, then we can cast Spirit Bomb. So we're going to go in here, we're going to do this. I'm going to make sure my Sigil Flame hits them. Uh, I'm going to Fracture and Spirit Bomb. This is a situation where I may grab this target because my uh, group is doing a pretty good job here. So it's okay to go ahead and pull the next enemy in the dungeon. So go into Spirit Bomb. As you can see, because I'm trying to focus on... Uh, spending my soul fragments, you know, in the manner that I should based on our talent build. Uh, there are situations here where I'm capping on my pain a little bit or I'm forgetting to, uh, like, throw down my Immolation Aura or my Sigil Flame when I need to or even cast Demon Spikes. And honestly, because of how well our group is doing, I'm not even that worried about casting Demon Spikes. Now, it's something you should definitely practice and get used to. But this is one of those situations where this is the pace of the group, and because of the pace and competency of the group, I'm going to choose to play more aggressively, which means I am going to neglect some of my defensive abilities in favor of playing, uh, prioritizing my more offensive abilities. So here I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab these guys and pull them over. This might actually give me an opportunity to uh, use some of my defensive abilities now. Let's go ahead. We can cast Soul Barrier. We'll get some extra absorption. That should help everybody out. Make sure we're keeping our Mark of Flame up. We're going to cap, get this Tinder over here. Spikes. Cast our Spirit Bomb. We've got that going. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab these Incubators as well. Just pull them over. We're almost done with this group, so we might as well. Spirit Bomb, Immolation Aura. I want to make sure that I'm getting threat on these particular enemies. Do another Soul Fragment. That gives us enough for a Spirit Bomb. We can go ahead and... Yep, this guy's over here, so we're going to grab him. And that's a way that we set the pace a little bit more aggressively because of the way that our group is playing and now instead of having to take time for every single one of these enemies to come over to us and pull one group after another we're now able to just kind of clear the whole room in one pull all right now here's the part where we're about to go into a boss so i'm gonna take a couple of seconds and let everybody kind of get their health back let our healer top everybody off i'm gonna go ahead and cast soul barrier now uh, because it's got a 30 second cooldown that's short enough that I can go ahead and uh, use that utilize that here now this is a situation where I should have picked these up a lot faster but I hit my usual keybind instead of <laughs> clicking on the uh, the ability that's one of the downsides of uh, trying to show the clicks and the keys here is that sometimes I do hit I hit the key for an ability I want to cast and then uh, it, nothing happens. So we actually took down that group really, really fast. That was very impressive from this group. Um, this is just normal difficulty level. But, you know, that's nothing to uh, really poke too much fun at. All right, we got a five spirit bomb. We're going to go ahead and we're going to jump over here and get Mark of Flame. We're going to pick this target up with our taunt. All right, we're going to 
try and get a couple of fracture or fractures off to spirit bomb. We got one snake who's not quite paying as much attention to us as I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I pick him up. I can go around and collect my spirit, my uh, soul fragments if I need to for healing. If I'm away from the boss, I'm going to hit him with a glaive throw just to uh, in add some extra threat while I'm heading over to him. Make sure I've got my AoE abilities up, and we're good. Now I'm looking at my group, and I'm seeing everybody's full health, everybody's ready to go. You know, let's just rock it. Let's get in here, let's do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to pull all these guys together. I am going to need, in this case... There were a couple things probably going on here. One is that, you know, I did run ahead and pull a bunch of enemies at once. So I took the brunt of the damage there. But also, you've got to think about line of sight for your healer as well. Let's go ahead and cast Soul Barrier. We might as well. So if your healer... We're going to go ahead and dump some pain with Soul Cleave there. Uh, line of sight for your healer is important. If your healer can't see you, then they can't heal you. And sometimes the inclines like that are going to cause problems where maybe with a competent healer you would be pulling the right amount of enemies, but because of the incline they couldn't quite heal you with the timing that they normally would. Now in this situation my health was dropping because I was standing and stuff on the ground that I shouldn't have. And it was not the fault of my healer or my defensive abilities. I was just standing in ground effects. Man, it did that last time, too. I thought I could jump over this. What is that? No, thank you. All right. So same thing here. We've got uh, one person who's pretty low on health. I'm going to wait just a couple of seconds and let my healer get in there and handle that. All right, so I am going to go defensive here. I'm going to go ahead and pull these guys over as well. We're going to we're going to step it up here. And the main thing that I need to pay attention to is my ground effects. We're going to cast Sigil of Silence here to keep them from casting some of their abilities. And I do have enough for a nice spirit bomb here. We've got one guy running away. We're going to taunt him over. And then we're going to throw Glaive on him as well to generate some extra threat to make sure that uh, someone else doesn't take the aggro away from us. All right, we're casting, we're focusing here. I'm focusing on maintaining threat more than anything because I pulled so many enemies. And if I lose threat on these targets, then that's just gonna lead to my party not being able to do their job. So I prioritize using my AOE abilities and maintaining threat there over trying to have the perfect rotation. All right, so we're gonna jump in here. We're gonna turn, we're going to glaive throw on that guy to get him to come over. Start working on our AoE abilities. We've almost got, we're gonna Sigil Misery on that guy. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna cause him <clears throat> to be interrupted. Like it doesn't silence the target, but it interrupts their spell casting. So if he was casting a spell, then it would cause him to come over to me instead of just standing there. I always like to start the boss throw with a little glaive throw and then make sure I jump in there and get my sigil flame going. And now for the most part we should be able to do just fine here. So I'm going to focus once again on trying to deal as much damage as possible and also just staying out of any ground effects because our healer is doing a really good job of keeping us healed up. That's not to say we totally ignore our health, but we can focus on getting this guy killed a lot faster. Into Fracture. We can Soul Cleave real quick for a quick heal. And we're good to go. So same thing, I check in here at the end of the boss, I see everybody's health is pretty much good. So 
So that tells me that I can go ahead and set a little bit of an aggressive pace here as well. Now this particular section of the dungeon, there's lots of ways for people, they're taking damage, but they're taking damage because of this stuff, not because of enemies. So really what I want to pay attention to here is what is the status of my team when they get to the end of this thing. Oh, come on. I hate that they change this so you can't just jump over it. Maybe I have to jump through a particular gap, I don't know. Alright, they killed the guy who generally does that. I'm going to pick up this guy. Now this section has a lot of non-elite enemies in it, so chances are my party is just going to run ahead of me and not even care. And that's fine. Alright, so we're going to go over to this orb. So as tank here, I'm just going to try to aggro as much stuff as my, I can and let my party uh, attack or obtain the orb. So this orb guardian is going to wake up when we pick up the orb. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of threat on these guys. And now I'm just going to follow the guy with the orb and make sure that I kind of pick up everything along the way and maintain threat on everything along the way as well. Alright, so we're going to fracture, fracture, spirit bomb. We're going to grab that orb guardian. we got a couple extras here. Like I said, most of these enemies here are not elites, so it's kind of okay if I don't have threat on every single one of them. This is kind of an opportunity for me to take a mini break as well. Since no matter what we're doing, you know, there's, there's no situation where everybody's health is good, so I don't have to heal them. So as tank, you know, I, I gotta keep on top of my game for pretty much the whole entire dungeon. So I try to find the spaces like this where I can kind of hands off you know my team can handle it I'll just make sure I grab the elites and then I don't have a problem with that like right here you know I'm just gonna collect as much as I can if I drop a mark of flame here then anything that runs through is gonna aggro to me and we're good do an infernal strike right here so I get another mark of flame everything attacks me we're good I've got one elite here, so this would be the person that I'd be trying to maintain threat on. So yeah, you have to find your places to breathe in the dungeons as well. Alright, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to be a little bit aggressive here, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that group, but I'm going to pull them up to me if I can, which means I'm going to put down a sigil of silence right there to make sure... Oh. There's an oh crap button, there's a metamorphosis. So that was a situation where, you know, I pulled a little more than I probably should have. So it was up to me to make sure that I stayed alive. So I used both of my oh crap buttons there to use uh, metamorphosis and to use my uh, soul barrier. But as you see, I got a significant amount of healing from that. Uh, and then my healer had enough time to get me back up to full without me dying. So, and I knew that those were, uh, those are some of the more difficult pulls. Those uh, enemies hit particularly hard compared to others. Uh, so I knew it was probably going to be a struggle, but that was a good opportunity to show off how to use those oh crap buttons. All right. And build up some more soul fragments here. Cast Spirit Bomb. Now, my objective in this particular fight, and I know this is specific to the dungeon, but it's all about knowing your priorities, is I need to pick up the Orb Guardian. The Heart Guardian. Here we go. So that's my main target. I need to pick him up so he does not kill my party. And my party is going around to kill these guys. So what I want to do is I want to make sure the Heart Guardian is near one of these so that my AoE abilities will deal damage to both of them. 
Also, this is a fight where my healer needs to be able to focus on healing this uh, avatar. So there are going to be situations where they're not healing me, and this is a good opportunity for me to do a little bit of self-healing. So I'm going to pick up the Heart Guardian again. All right. And this is where I can use my Soul Cleave, get a little bit of healing there, make sure I've got my Demon Spikes up. There's also no harm in me building up a couple of Soul Fragments. And then casting my Soul Barrier to prevent some damage. Alright, so once again, I want the Heart Guardian. That's my objective. I can go ahead and put my Fiery Brand on him, so he's going to deal a lot less damage than me. Use my Spirit Bomb, use my Demon Spikes. Build up some more Fragments. Spirit Bomb again. Demon Spikes. Make sure I've got my AoEs and my debuffs going. Alright, he's down. I had a little too much pain, and I didn't have a lot of soul fragments, so I made sure to use my soul cleave there to get rid of some of that pain that I had. Alright, pick up the heart guardian. Like I said, try to pull him over to one of these so that my AoE damage is going to deal damage to him as well. And that's it. Dungeon is done. So as you can see, there were a few opportunities there to set the pace of the dungeon, to check in and see how my group was doing. A couple times I had to slow it down. A couple times I was able to take a break. Uh, and we really got to see, you know, just kind of how everything plays out and how it should work. Prioritizing different abilities as you need to. So that's it. That's the guide. Hopefully this has helped you out. If it has, please throw a like on the video. Uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos, and if you like the content that I create, then please throw me a subscription. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you're having fun in World of Warcraft, and I'll see you on the next one.